Well, a happy Monday to all of you out there in this great big world that I call social media. This is your brother Dana coming to you from the city of Chicago. I know there may be many of you out uh, barbecuing right now as today is Memorial Day and maybe even a few of you celebrating. Um, as of myself, I cannot celebrate until I know that the chosen people of the Most High Yah are truly given uh, where, what they deserve. And this country, even though some many black brothers and sisters have died to fight for freedom, this country still does everything in its power to keep them from their freedom. And until they're free, I cannot, I cannot rejoice. Um, shalom, shalom to all of my precious chosen people of the Most High Yah that are out there. And be encouraged because there is a day coming that will be greater than Memorial Day. And that is the day when the Most High Yah moves you out of this oppression um, within the hands of the second Egypt, America, and, and puts you in your rightful place of leadership. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, President Trump, um, or for others, King Trump, that kind of issued a decree, you could say, in releasing or telling or nicely commanding that governors across the United States open up places of worship, churches, for members to, um, to, to gather as of yesterday um, because they are considered essential. Um, you know, and, and although Christianity created the church and the church was never a part in, in the form that Christianity has developed it, it was never intended to be that way when Yahshua HaMashiach, um, um walked the earth. He, he did exactly that, the opposite, which was to tear down the walls of the church so that we as people who are to be the church, uh, would live our lives. And so instead of putting um, millions and billions of dollars into a church building, we would do what Yahshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ did, put those millions and billions of dollars into the hungry, into the unjust systems of this country that is wrongfully um, imprisoning and, and killing and lynching um, our black brothers and sisters, to feed the widows, to make sure that nobody dies of cancer because they can't afford to buy medicine. But yet our white churches and our evangelical churches, Christian churches across this nation, um, you know, are, are, are being poured with millions of dollars to keep that padded seat and to add comfort into that church to draw people in. When if you would have just gone out and done what the Most High Yah called you to do, guess what? Just like the two little fish, you would have never lacked. But anyway, well, it was kind of a side point, but, but uh, President Trump issued this decree. And I, I saw this picture here. And it really caused me to bring this word to you today to show you what I believe is such a contrast. Um, so here you have a lady, never has Memorial Day meant more than it does this year, proudly supporting my president while I do my grocery shopping with no mask on. God bless America. Uh, you might be wondering, you know, why did I pick this picture and I'm talking about, you know, churches and here this individual is talking about a grocery store. Because what I want to bring out in here where this is where the separation is absolutely going to happen. And, and this has to change before the other elements of, of um, white evangelical Christian America changes. The first thing is attitude. It's the first thing. And that's what I want to talk to you tonight about or this afternoon. Um, and I want to utilize Daniel 6 because I know there are many churches out there that are commanding their members that we can still get together because just look, when King Darius issued this decree to limit or to stop, I should say, praying or worshiping to your God for 30 days, Daniel didn't. Daniel still did what he was going to do. Yes, he did. 
But see, I believe there's a difference in Daniel and there's a difference in the evangelical white Christian community. Not only is the church of itself not ordained by the Most High Yah or by God, but that was man's religious desire. Even though that, we cannot say that God has not used this imperfect, uh, imperfect church to, you know, save people's lives, at least bring them to salvation. Um, we know now that they're nowhere to be found in this truth. Um, but there's a difference in attitude and there's a difference in what I and you and I see in in these people that are fighting to go back to church versus the attitude that we find in Daniel. So it says, now, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. I could stop right here and already show you what the difference is. See, Daniel went back and prayed, not as the Christian church has taught it. You ain't going to stop me. Daniel had so much boldness. He don't care what the government said. He went and still prayed to his God. No, I don't believe he was like that. And the reason why I know his attitude wasn't like that is because all you churchgoers and all you white evangelicals that are saying that you demand to go back to church, I don't see any of you on your knees. I don't see any of you humble. I don't see any of you thanking God. I don't see any of you doing anything that I can read that you can see in the man of Daniel. He went home. He knelt down on his knees. Getting on your knees is a example of humility, submission. He was submitting to the Most High Yah. He was not submitting or arrogantly proclaiming and commanding and demanding his rights as an American white Christian citizen. And you will give it to me. No, it says he went home and he fell on his knees, prayed in a humble position, and then he thanked God. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. See, and these guys were already setting him up for failure. And they went before the king and they spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Verse 13, so they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. I would love to see your King Trump find something that he is displeased in himself and what he's done. The lies. All this stuff he's stirring up and lying about that ultimately is, is going to take you out. And I know right now you as my white evangelicals and Christians, you are not going to listen to it. But once you start seeing yourselves dropping out, you will understand it's not your black brothers and sisters. It's not your aliens or your immigrants that are the gangless, lawless people that are taking your lives. It's your own ignorance, your own racist heart, your own uh, worship of your white supremacy and your earthly king Trump that is taking you all out. You're drinking your own homemade Kool-Aid and you got your flavor and the sugar and all that you're putting in it from your leader. Because see here, this king realized that he did something that was about to hurt a man that he loved. And he was disappointed 
and displeased with himself and set his heart on to deliver Daniel. Aborted tell the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to him, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statue which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, will deliver you. Has King Trump given you the assurance that the God that you and him serve is going to deliver you? Or is he telling you, you, you don't need, I'm not going to tell you that you ha can't go see into your church. I'm going to tell that you can, and I'm going to make a decree. And the, and the states that don't follow my decrees, I'm going to cut them off. That's all right. Because we know who supplies all that we need. It is not the economy of the United States of America. And so the king spoke to Daniel, and another translation says, I believe your God will deliver you. See, you right now are not are think you're being put into a dying uh, a lion's den but and you're thinking that you're in that form because you're being told you can't assemble with your god but yet do you need to assemble with your god can't you go to your own upper room and pray three times a day or you know is it just sundays that you go and pray to him because, see, I don't ever need to gather with anybody physically, even though the Bible may say do not forsake the assemblies of getting together because I have a phone that reaches out on a daily basis to mighty men and women of the Most High Yah that we can have church several times a day where we sharpen one another, where we praise the Most High Yah. And in my own office, I turn my radio on, I turn my music on, and I worship the Most High Yah. Then the stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his signet ring and with the signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Verse 18, Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. And no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Does your King Trump do that for you? As he sees and knows of danger that is coming your way. Even if he's been tricked. Even if Obama, President Obama and that administration set him up for failure as these individuals did to King Darius in setting up Daniel to die. I heard reports that your King Trump is not fasting, praying, and removing music or entertainment from his life, but he's actually out golfing. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with an amenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the most high living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Are you innocent? Are you innocent in the purity in your motives of wanting to get together? 
Or is it out of a rebellious spirit that nobody is going to tell you what you can do? That's fine. But if the mouth of COVID-19 is not shut, and the mouth of COVID-19 bites you, Almost without a shadow of a doubt in me, I know you are not going to run back to your church and have your pastor or even run to King Trump to have him fast and pray that you will be healed. But you're going to run to the hospital. You're going to run to the ER. You're going to run to the innocent nurses and doctors that have been trying to tell you to play it safe that you don't care what they say, but now you're going to command and demand that they heal you. All I want to say is go back to your God. If he's told you to go to church and you've been on your knees and you fasted and you prayed and you know that God has said go as you have before and your motives are pure, go because then he'll shut the mouth of COVID-19. But if you get it, please go back to your pastors, to your elders, and have them lay hands on you. Don't come to the hospitals or the ERs. Trust your God to deliver you. And count it all joy if... The Most High Yah does not deliver you. You can be a martyr. Be a martyr then in the day when Yeshua and all that returns and you can wear your lily white. And you can say that you were martyred by the injustices of America. Because they were hindering you from going to church. But you went to church and you gave up your life for your belief in Jesus Christ. Because I just heard reports that President Trump not only was golfing, but is throwing out all kinds of political insults. He's not on his knees praying for you. He's not lamenting for you. He hasn't turned away entertainment for you. He's done nothing for you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed God. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones and pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. You're going to see the second wave come. And this second wave of coronavirus is going to take those who are not living in the land of Goshen, those who are not a part of the remnant of the Most High Yah. If you still consider yourself out there as a white evangelical Christian and you refuse to embrace that Christianity has done some horrible things and continues to do to our black brothers and sisters in this country, and if you do not repent of that and, and cling to the precious chosen of the Most High Yah as that remnant understand that the lion is coming back for you the coronavirus and all these other plagues are coming back for you because it was the hardening of the heart in the attitude of pharaoh that caused his people to perish it is the hardening heart of your king trump with your hardening of your heart that will cause you and your children and your children's children to perish.
to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you, King Darius said. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living Most High Yah, and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall never be destroyed. His kingdom. Not the religion of Christianity. Not the churches of Christianity. Everything that is not of the kingdom of the Most High Yah in this coming season is going to crumble. Every nation that has come up against the children of the Most High Yah and His kingdom is going to crumble. It is going to come crashing down. And your attitudes are what will bring it to you. He delivers and rescues, and He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this day Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So good news to those of us that are like Daniel, that are worshiping the Most High Yah in spirit and in truth. Truth that has revealed the lies of the white supremacist religion of Christianity. And what really made me sad just before I came in here to do this video is I heard the governor, the Republican governor of North Dakota, pleading with his people. And he literally broke up in tears, pleading with his people to stop making fun or harassing or picking on people that are still deciding to wear the mask. And his exact words was maybe some of those individuals wearing the mask is because they have a five-year-old or a son with cancer or they have an elderly person that's dying and they don't want to bring that virus. He had to plead with Christian people, the followers of King Trump, who say that he was sent by God himself. He had to plead with their followers to stop harassing people who are choosing to wear a mask. And that is why you're not humble. Because hum humility would make you understand that when you were forgiven a major debt, like the scripture says, and then all of a sudden you came to somebody that owed you a little bit. See, here you've been fighting for your freedom and now you got it. And then the first thing you do is you go bash those that don't follow your way. But see, that's been the way of Christianity the whole time. We want everybody to be controlled and we don't mind everybody being controlled. We've just never intended for you to control us. Not me, but white Christianity, evangelicalism. So there will be a second lion's den coming for those who choose to have an attitude that is not of the Most High Yah. Go to your church, worship. No way, shape, or form do I want you to be stopped from doing that. But remember, when you get sick, don't come running to us. Go to your God that you have found at the church that you must be at and ask those within that body to pray and heal you. Shalom.